What happens when you take a feisty AMG Tiger and you throw it into a love cage with the luxurious main having Maybach lion? Well, after a 93 day gestation period, you get a liger, a smoke show liger named Brabus, and specifically, you get a Brabus Rocket 900. <laughs> So today, we're gonna to take a look at the science behind this car's V12 engine and how it's able to propel this 5,600 pound machine up to 60 miles an hour in less than four seconds. How its intelligent suspension system can see what's coming before you do. And how the Rocket 900 compares to the car it shares its DNA with, the Mercedes Maybach S650. You can sip champagne in the back of this thing while doing 220 frog and miles per hour. Boy, oh boy, let's get into it. Well, all right, all right, all right. Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this episode of Bumper to Bumper. I've been using Raycon earbuds long before anybody paid us to use them. And I wasn't trying to make a statement. I just like them. I like popping in my everyday E25 earbuds while I'm driving through the ambiguous desert during magic hour. I'm listening to freeform jazz and whale sounds. It guides my escape from being a celebrity. The everyday E25, they give me six hours of playtime. They sound just as good as those other premium earbuds, but at half the price. Hmm. And they come in a lot of cool colors too. I like colors. It'd be real cool if you guys could head over to buyraycon.com slash bumper. Get you a nice set of high quality earbuds like the everyday E25. Let them know we sent you. <laughs> <laughs> now, AMG makes some of the coolest, most powerful benzes, and Maybach is known for its extreme luxury and comfort. Now, Brabus is a whole nother beast that takes both of them to an extreme. So to understand exactly what Brabus does to make these land rockets so fast, we first have to get to know the car it's based off. The Mercedes Maybach S650, which for convenience sake, we'll just call the S650, is Maybach's top tier model. Now the S650, it's a ripper, and a lot of that credit goes to the AMG M279, an incredible V12 bi-turbo engine. It's been around since 2002, that's 18 years. Now Mercedes has kept this engine simple by using a single overhead cam setup and a three valve design. Now if we were to compare this with another V12 engine like the one in the LaFerrari, that has a similar size and setup, but it uses a dual overhead cam system, which doubles the amount of cam shafts and also adds weight and size, and it also makes timing a little bit more difficult. Now the S650's engine also uses something called multi-spark ignition, where the spark plug fires five times for every cylinder cycle. Now when a spark goes off inside the cylinder at low RPMs, there's a risk of the mixture being too lean, which means that there's more air than fuel in your air fuel mixture. And because of that, one spark isn't enough to burn that mixture before it gets pushed out during the exhaust stroke. And that results in poor efficiency. So the AMG M279 fires off five times per cycle, which creates a larger flame kernel, which is the little burst of flames that happen at the tip of the spark plug. And that ensures that all the fuel gets burned completely before the exhaust valve opens. Now this results in better consistency and efficiency in each of those 12 cylinders. Okay, so all that's cool, Jerry Berry, but I came to learn about Brabus, you frog leg loving, Tom DeLong lookalike with all the proportions of Woody from Toy Story and eyebrows that bounce around. So what does Brabus even do? Brabus figured out a way to make a mind-blowing 900 horsepower and 1,160 foot-pounds of torque out of that AMG V12. That's a power increase of 279 horsepower and 368 foot-pounds of twist. So the only question I have is, how'd they do it? So the first thing that Brabus does to the engine is they strip it down to the studs, like completely down 
to the studs. The only part of the engine that sticks around from the Mercedes factory is the aluminum block. And even that gets a lot of changes done to it. Now Brabus takes the block and increases the displacement from 6.3 liters up from six liters by boring out each cylinder, shaving off layers of metal inside each of those little, little compartments of combustion. That's what I'm calling a cylinder now, compartment of combustion. And when you bore out any cylinder, the machine creates a fine cross-hatched imperfection on the surface of the bore. And these are essential because it helps a cylinder wall retain oil to assist with the piston ring lubrication. Now, theoretically, the idea is for there to be a very thin layer of oil between the edge of the piston rings and the cylinder wall. And what Brabus does is they cut down the cylinder wall to expose a specifically calibrated amount of silicone crystals on the wall, allowing for the optimal amount of oil to stay in between the silicon and the aluminum on the wall for the absolute best performance possible. And Brabus actually uses a high-powered microscope to inspect each cylinder wall to make sure that it's been cross-hatched to the right specification from their factory. Pretty freaking cool, man. Now, along with the increase in volume, Brabus also manufactures their own crankshaft for the engine that provides a longer stroke for the connecting rods inside each of those cylinders. And when you have a longer stroke, you make more space for that air fuel mixture, which makes a bigger combustion. And this increase in strokeage has to be paired with a brand new set of precision Brabus internals. And boy, oh boy, do I mean precision. Brabus manufactures all new internals for the V12 engine, replacing the steel connecting rods with forged aluminum rods. And not only that, they replace the Mercedes pistons with milled ones, which are cut down to save some weight. And Brabus also uses their own lighter weight valves, their camshafts, their springs, and injectors, all of which are specifically made to accommodate the increase in displacement and heat and power. Now the process of replacing stock internals isn't special in its own right, but the process that Brabus uses for assembling the internals in this engine is really, really cool. So first, once all 12 sets of connecting rods and piston heads have been manufactured, Brabus weighs all of those pieces individually down to a tenth of a gram. Then Brabus pairs up a connecting rod to a piston and they weigh them to make sure that they have the exact same mass as every other connecting rod piston assembly, which ensures a truly perfect engine balance in each of the two banks of six cylinders. Brabus then reassembles the engine by hand because hey, they're greasy knuck boys too over there. But that is just the engine. But don't forget, we've got two turbos that need to get bolted back onto this bad boy. Now Brabus replaces the AMG tuned turbochargers from the M279 engine with their own, which increases the size of the compressor units and also increases the size of the turbines, which all that means is it forces even more air into the engine. Now with all of this added pressure, and you got your added air, and you got your added displacement, there is a lot more heat being generated in the engine bay, and that needs to be managed. Brabus created their own custom carbon fiber air intake module that works in tandem with a new front grill. And this directs more air to the turbos more efficiently, and it also helps direct more air into the cooling system. Brabus actually lines the entire outside and bottom of the air intake module with gold, baby. So that it dissipates the most heat possible, much like another insane engineer's wet dream of a supercar, the McLaren F1. And we talked about that in a couple episodes back of B2B, you should go watch it. Now Brabus uses their own lightweight, high strength manifold. And in addition to the turbos and the forged and milled internals, it produces a super smooth, super fast, zero to 60 time of 3.7 seconds and a top speed of 220 miles per hour.
You already knew why they called it a 900. Now you know why they called it a rocket. And the crazy thing is, the engineers over at Brabus actually limited the power output. Now, rumor has it that they had already come up with the 900 namesake and it was just too much of a pain in the butt to change it. So engineers are like, all right, I guess we got, I guess we got to hit 900 horsepower. So let's just tune this thing down. Engineering mysteries on B2B. Do, 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 do. Now the original transmission and drivetrain, suspension and brake system are all carried over from the S650 and remained unchanged on the Rocket 900, which is another testament to the engineers over at Mercedes. These pieces are under a lot more stress than usual and they hold up well enough to cope with a huge bump in power and speed. The only thing that Brabus has to tune is something called magic body control. And that uses a radar system to predictively adjust the suspension setup for bumps in the road that the car is about to run over, rather than adjusting as the car runs over them. Predict what my butt is about to feel, car. Now this magic body control can even lean inward on a turn by up to 2.65 degrees to compensate for body roll to make sure that the car stays flat through a bendy corner. Now all of this is controlled by a system that monitors road surface changes, your throttle input, your braking input, and steering input to constantly adjust the car's pitch, lean, and ride height. It takes Brabus up to eight weeks just to tune the engine of the Rocket 900, and this doesn't even include the rest of the vehicle's bits like the bodywork or the interior. Some Brabus tuned cars can take over a year just to complete. It just depends on what the customer wants in their car. And customers of Brabus can basically pick and choose any material, stitch patterns, colors, fits, and finishes for the entire car down to the most minute level. This is also why this car can cost over half a million dollars. Heck, a set of tires for this car cost over 20 grand. Now Brabus defines their craftsmanship by passion over profit and the Rocket 900 mm, is a perfect example of that mindset. If you wanna learn more about the people that make other cars that Brabus makes, check out this episode of Up to Speed. You wanna know more about uh, internals and, and forged materials and how they do, how, how forged parts are better than cast parts or mill parts, go check out this episode of the Supra. Guys, we got freaking shows almost every day here at Donut. So follow us, like, hit subscribe. That helps us out a ton. Follow me on Instagram at Jeremiah Burton. Follow us on Donut at Donut Media. I'll see you next week. Bye for now.